Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper for Takedown Wrestling Media. We cover the sport coast to coast, border to border. We head out to Long Island. I do believe she's in Long Island. Yes or no, Kira? I'm actually New York, New York. New York, New York. It's Kira Tirana Berry from New York, New York. She has been named the new team leader for the 2014 U.S. Women's World Team by USA Wrestling. Quite an honor indeed. She joins us today. Kira, congratulations. That is a big deal. Thank you, Scott. Um, I'm very excited to become a team leader and to be a supporter of the women's wrestling program. You're going to be initially the team leader for the 2014 World Championships in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. And then, of course, we'll be on the uh, women's team USA leadership staff throughout the four-year Olympic cycle. What uh, if, if folks out there are, are uh, perhaps un- uh, uninitiated. Can you describe what the job looks like to you from your chair? Well, I think, you know, what I really you look at in, in my familiarity, and obviously it's a uh, new appointment, so I have a lot more to learn about it, but, you know, my feeling it is really to get out there and to spread the word about women's wrestling and make sure that the team and the coaching staff and USA Wrestling has all the support they need so that our athletes can go out there, um, focus on what's going on on the mat and their training, and achieve their fullest potential. So um, it's really whatever, uh, you know, Terry Steiner and, and USA wrestling and the individual athletes um, need, um, I will look to make sure that 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 happens. Now, it wasn't that long ago where wrestling was challenged around the world for its rightful place within the Olympic structure, and women's wrestling uh, was one of the things that that, uh, the International Olympic Committee wanted to see changed. They wanted to see more women's wrestling or more opportunities for women, and lo and behold, we've added two new weights for women's wrestling, and i got to believe there's some satisfaction in that. We're seeing some growth, but we're also seeing the renaissance of the sport. Would you agree? Yes, I do. I, I think it just, you know, I think, you know, a, a couple things happened with that, and um, certainly, you know, adding women into it, and, and, you know, while it was very stressful and, and time with the wrestling and what was happening with the Olympics, I think it allowed everybody to really focus on what was important about Olympics, about wrestling, why it should be in the Olympics, and to really think hard about the sport and, and what it means to the individual athletes, what it means to um, our youth, and, and, and what it means to the country to have the, this great sport as part of the Olympics and to be able to represent the U.S. Um, at the Olympics in, in wrestling. And so I think it's re-energized um, a lot of people about wrestling. USA Wrestling's Executive Director Rich Bender said that I'm certain that the U.S. women's effort and the entire organization will significantly benefit from her leadership. She brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to the program. Let's talk about the background. Let's talk about your history in and around this sport. Where did it all start? Um, you know, I, I, I've known wrestlers and had good friends since high school who've been part of wrestling programs. Um, obviously, I met my husband at Columbia College uh, our sophomore year, um, and he was he wrestled out and was eventual captain of the Columbia team. So I was around that program um, through college, and it's really through his passion and certainly a lot of friends and, and people he's had, um, I've met through him over the years have been wrestlers. And what's always struck me is their passion for wrestling. And whether they wrestled for a year in high school uh, or wrestled all the way through college or afterwards on the international scene, um, wrestling has been a fundamental part of who they are. Um, and that really struck me. And, and you know, I don't hear that as much from uh, other sports. Um, and so it's that I got sort of carried along in that passion and really learned a lot about it. And then I have, you know, both of my sons started wrestling. Um, and once you getting involved in Beat the Streets, obviously that really expanded um, my knowledge of wrestling just from the ground up. And um, just the, the passion that people have once they're introduced to the sport, I think, is very infectious. We're talking with uh, Kira Berry. And Kira, if you would please... Um Describe some of the similarities, and and I understand sports are different, sport to sport, Mm -hmm. but uh, you were a member of the founding women's varsity soccer team at Columbia University, and a lot of folks said that couldn't be done, Uh, and and to this day, you remain an active soccer soccer player. Uh, Are there some correlations here that we can draw from uh, from your uh, participation in founding a, a women's program at Columbia to just uh, making sure that wrestling continues its upward ascent? 
Well, I think that um, I think that getting involved in the ground at ground at anything um, is you learn a lot of lessons about what happens in perseverance, and that uh, it's not always a straight path. Um, and I, I, you know, that was just a, a very interesting experience where, again, it was Columbia. I was the first fully coeducational class at Columbia. Um, and also in that role, I've just um, finished a term as the first woman to be president of the Columbia College Alumni Association. And I think all of those are very similar things for, you know, women are expanding um, and their opportunities are growing in a lot of different areas. And I think those skills, um, those skills transfer. So whether it's being, you know, the first the first team, you know, we, you just get out there and you do it and you have a passion for it and you follow every opening and every opportunity that you have. And I think that's what's going to translate. And that's what women's wrestling is about. I mean, when I went to Columbia, um, most people didn't even know that the college had, was co-ed. Um, you just jump in that. This is a very similar parallel with women's wrestling. Many people are surprised to learn that women's wrestling has been an Olympic sport for as many years as it has. And I think a lot of what we need to do is spread the word that women's wrestling is an Olympic sport. Um, it's a, one of the fastest growing sports uh, in the country. And, uh, and you know, harness that enthusiasm to get more people both aware of the sport and supporting it and our athletes. So what you're saying is the basics of any successful business is promote, advertise, make it, uh, uh, make it not so quite a, 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 a secret. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I absolutely think the, the more that we can get out and, and people become aware of it, I think the support will grow very quickly. And I think we'll also have um, many more girls coming up and, and looking to participate in the sport. It's a, it's a very, very exciting sport. It's a whole world of new opportunities uh, for women uh, and girls to, to get out there and, and compete. And I think there's a lot of excitement around it. Um, and I just think it, it's not as well known. The United States obviously faces challenges from other countries that perhaps have been wrestling longer than the U.S. But boy, have they come along in the last few years. Big steps for Team USA. Can the United States women's program literally rise to the top and be the best in the world? I really strongly believe that we can. We are a nation of really, you know, we have so much diversity and, and really fantastic athletes. And I think it's really, you know, being focused, again, spreading the word, making sure, I think the most important thing is making sure our athletes have the resources and are able to train um, and get into the most competitive situations. And I think as we raise awareness of women's wrestling throughout the United States, we're also going to grow the numbers, grow the depth. Um, and make it more competitive nationally, which will also help us be more competitive internationally. But I think when we put our minds to it, we really can do anything. Um, and I've just found that to be particularly true with women. A strong leader in your own right, um, i got to believe that no matter what you do is what you want to do. But ha what was David's, uh, uh, your husband David Barry, what was his uh, response when he found out about the opportunity, the fact that you wanted to do this? He was really thrilled and excited. Um, you know, he, as I said, wrestling's been a huge part of his life. And as team leader, um, you know, in the last quadrennial, he met and is very close with a number of the women wrestlers. And he believes very strongly in them and, and having their opportunity. So it's something that he's been very supportive. And it's nice to have a passion um, that we both that we both share. Obviously, you know, while he was, you know, I've been to a number, I've been to world championships and accompanied to the Olympics um, and accompanied into that and had the opportunity to meet and see both the women and men, men wrestling. Mm. Columbia University seems like only yesterday, but you continue to give back to the university. You continue to give back to the, the greater world of sport. Uh, for a variety of reasons, and uh, perhaps you can put a finger on one or two of them, uh, why do you continue to give back? Um, I feel that's very important. I look around and, you know, I, I have this driving passion just to make the world a better place um, and to provide opportunity. I think everybody should have as much opportunity as they can. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate to be able to have a lot of opportunity to pursue my own personal passions. Um, I really became very interested in sport. Obviously, I've been... Uh, very active since I was little and tried a lot of sports and played a lot of different varsity uh, teams all the way through high school, continued with the uh with the soccer in particular, um, but you know, having my own children um, and then being around 
you know, other kids. I see the opportunity that athletics provides for, for kids. And I think, you know, in order for us to mature and grow into healthy um, adults who contribute to our society and contribute to our country um, and achieve our own personal fulfillment, we're all not going to find that um, in the traditional classroom setting. So whether it's arts or music or drama or athletics, um, I think it's very important to have these outlets for um, our children as they're trying to find their way into becoming um, healthy, fulfilled adults. And um, I've seen it with my own with my own kids. I've seen it with their friends. And so, falling into working with youth athletics, it became it became very easy and very natural way to contribute back to my community. You and your husband David share three beautiful kids. Olivia, uh, I think she's nineteen now, isn't she? Yes, just about 19. And what is she, is she uh, at college or what is she doing? She, she has actually just finished her mm -hmm. freshman year at, at Columbia. She played three sports in high school all four years of varsity letters. Um, she was a soccer player, swimmer, and, and ran track. Um, women's uh, wrestling was not readily available, although it, so we hope she, she could have tried that. But she has stayed active in the wrestling community and what managed the Columbia men's wrestling team this past year. What about Jake and Charlie? Uh, Jake and Charlie are both wrestling. They, you know, both started out of out of the edge. Um, we've uh, helped them. They brought the edge to Hoboken, New Jersey, where we lived until just recently. Um, and Jake is now just finishing his sophomore year at Poly Prep um, and has been wrestling. And, and Charlie has been wrestling the Hoboken Rec program, and both of them train through the edge in New Jersey. Well, it seems to me all three have got... Uh uh, two very, very uh, well-grounded leaders in their life and that and their parents. I, I really like that. It is, um, it's very neat for me to be able to do this first interview with you, Kira. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to be a part of that challenge to do everything I can to help you in your effort to promote uh, the women's team, its effort, and, of course, those within the team, those looking to make the team. Uh, we find sometimes the stories of those individuals are, uh, are just as uh, engaging as perhaps their pursuit on the mat. Agree or disagree? I, abs I absolutely agree. I think one of the thing I think one of the challenges is getting more of the stories of our wrestlers out there uh, in the mainstream media. It's been really exciting over the past few years. Um, you know, working with Mike Novogratz and his vision for Beat the Streets and the annual gala uh, that we that we throw each year, and watching as that grew from a a dinner party cocktail reception into an actual competition on the Intrepid and then bringing it into Times Square and get Grand Central, uh, getting more, t getting wrestling more uh, on our t television outlets, um, I think is a really important part of telling the story. But I think if you look at what, you know, our individual athletes have done and, and you know, wrestling is a very unique sport in terms of it, very much a team, but also very much an individual sport where you get out there um, and the perseverance and the grit and the really skills that you learn um, that are transferable to success in later life um, is a very big part of big part of wrestling and big part of the individual stories. And I think that the more we can tell these stories and get them out to uh, the general population, the more successful uh, we will be in attracting support um, and, most importantly, getting more viewers um, in the stands um, watching wrestling and supporting it. That is key. Terry Steiner, the national women's coach, uh, our good friend, said that of you, she brings a new energy into our women's program. Kira has the strength of character and commitment, which is important for our women athletes to see. She has many great ideas and a vision for women's wrestling for now and in the future. We happen to agree. Kira, it's awful good to talk with you. Congratulations on your new position as team leader uh, for the 2014 U.S. Women's World Team, but also for women's wrestling in general. I can't think of a better person to be in that spot right now when we need you most. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much, Scott, and I hope to continue the conversation with you and, and continue the conversation with the fans of wrestling and help to grow that, that base of support um, through, through your shows uh, over the year. I'll look forward to it. Kira, thank you for the opportunity today. My best to your family, and we'll look forward to talking to you in the coming weeks. Okay, thank you very much, Scott. For all of us at Takedown, I'm Scott Casper, and she is Kira Tirana Berry of New York, New York. She's the new team leader for Team USA 
the women's world team and beyond.